accelerated soil formation on grazing and ag land addresses the big problems, things like climate change, things like global water scarcity, and it addresses them at a local scale, one watershed, one farm, one town, one city at a time. Of course, agricultural production is the environmental service that we're most familiar with, and we can increase it when we increase soil production. I think we've seen some good examples of that over the last few days. The huge next one is water storage, and that's in soils, available for plant growth, in aquifers, coming out slowly in our streams, filling our reservoirs, keeping the world turning, really. Mitigation of flooding, drought, wildfire, erosion, dust storms, eutrophication, the algaeing up of our lakes and waterways, and ocean dead zones. This comes when we get soil right. Climate change mitigation and adaptation, being able to be resilient in the face of weather extremes, whichever direction they may turn. So these are opportunities, and payment for environmental services as a market mechanism is happening. There's pilots happening all around the United States, the world. Um, in the US, there's a pretty big focus on water quality. There's a lot of water quality credit trading going on. There's talk about carbon sequestration, and there's USDA focus on it. There's even a new Office of Environmental Markets. Um, wetland and habitat mitigation banking is where the big bucks have been. Uh, it's about $3.5 billion industry a year in the US, and there's a lot of coinage that's been made. I'm working with a farmer in Virginia who was hired to mow the lawns and move the cows every few months. And a year after he got onto this farm, he had brokered an $11 million mitigation banking deal on 350 acres of pasture. Uh, it's a premium market there, high end. You have the Chesapeake Bay. It's highly degraded. There's a lot of early projects around cleaning up that bay. And he had a good opportunity in front of him, and he took it. Payment for watershed services in general are happening, and they're not just happening on a big policy level down, they're actually being brokered on local levels, which I think is a huge area of opportunity for us. We can respond to the problems in our watersheds. And the new market opportunities for us, I think, has to do with our ability to build new topsoil and to make landscapes work. In the payment for environmental services space right now, there's this sort of notion that what we want to do is protect what's there you know, not hurt it anymore. It's the hands-off environmentalism that we're all pretty familiar with. But our ability to fix land opens up a whole bunch of new stuff, like making water available to cities. Uh, we can make the water soak in. We can recharge groundwater. We can purify that water through the soil properties that make that happen. Uh, we can restore flow of surface waters, make the streams and springs come that have gone away. And I think one big opportunity, too, is most fresh water is used for irrigation. And at this point, there's a real price disparity between irrigation and what cities are willing to pay. And it's getting more and more each year. We're seeing the markets emerge. And sometimes it's just sort of eminent domain style taken away. Uh, and other times, the farmer feels as if she has no choice but to sell the water rights. But interestingly, uh, over the last 15 years, most of the water rights that are moving are doing, moving through leases. And I think another interesting opportunity is that with the right management on irrigated land, we can really quickly build soil properties. Uh, some University of Research a short time back showed that by putting particular grass combination sod rotations into a, a cropping under irrigation, that they were able to reduce the irrigation to one-tenth of what they were currently using and get the same yield. So they have 90% of that water that they used to use to grow some broccoli, now available for other things. And if a city really needs water, we might be able to consider that in a different light. So if we can quantify and scale the solutions that are happening on farms and ranches around the world, uh, we can solve watershed-wide problems. And it's a real combination of soil properties that add up to the environmental security and services that these cities need. It's soil cover, critically, fundamentally, Soil diversity, and most of it is in the soil. The soil carbon, of course, is critical. The soil crumb structure, the depth of the A horizon topsoil, and the rooting depth of plants. I mean, the rooting depth of plants is really what controls 
the global distribution of, of moisture and the way that moisture moves through our, our, our atmosphere. And you and I, as managers, have an incredible amount of control over that. These things scaled up, moved to the security and the economic activity, fundamentally, uh, in, our, in our watersheds and our cities. I'm, I'm not a thespian, um, but I'm going to try something here. I want to put on a different hat. I want to I stand in the place of imagining that I'm the decider for a city. And I'm, I'm a well-informed decider who gets how nature works and gets how my city uh, depends on the landscape that it sits on and that it draws from. Because uh, the well-being of my city and the functioning of my city doesn't just depend on the watershed I'm in. It depends on the watershed where my water comes from, if there's interbasin transfers, where my grain comes from, where the production of the goods and services from around the world come from. Because take away topsoil in any one of those places, and whatever it was, whether it was um, decision support on the telephone for running my computer, and things go away, and we can add the topsoil back and things start coming back, whether it's grain production, water, information. Paying land managers to rebuild soils is smart urban planning. And if I am going to have a secure, wealthy, sustainable city, I'm going to need functional hydrology in general. I need my groundwater recharged. I need flowing streams and rivers. I need my reservoirs full, and I need the water to be clean and not polluted. I'm spending a fortune every year on flooding, drought, wildfire. The respiratory problems in my city are through the roof from the dust storms. The wildfires, we're spending billions of year, billions a year just in the U.S. putting out wildfires, and the damage afterwards is even more, and our lakes are clogged up with algae. I'd like to avoid all that. I understand that if the soil and the landscapes are working, these problems actually could go away. I'd like to stop importing so much, whether it's insurance, all of the inputs to dams and pipelines and their maintenance, disaster cleanup, digging out roadside ditches, my reservoir silting up. In 1985, a, a guy named Pretty figured out that in the US, we spend $5 billion a year just digging out roadside ditches from agricultural erosion. That's a lot of money. That's a big market if we could uh, intervene in that. And that was 85. You know, the dollar's worth a lot less today. So I don't know, is it 10 billion? Uh, strong agriculture and ranching economics in the general region are really important, actually. We've kind of, you know, what's agriculture today in the U.S.? 3% of our domestic product. But before World War II, when we had all these derivatives and oil-powered development, there was a pretty common formula, and that was that farm gate receipts times seven was the size of the national economy. That was pretty simple. And if we can increase the amount of sunlight we're harvesting and turning into useful things, that's actually a pretty stable economic base. Now, I don't know if all the derivatives have given, it's given us a lot of economic activity. I don't know how stable it is. The last few years have been kind of a wake-up call on this. So as an enlightened city manager or corporate manager, it's clear to me that paying land managers to build soil might be the most cost-effective way to get what I need and to free up money to do other things and to develop and to be secure in the face of uh, weather variability and these disasters that are actually increasing year by year.